In the last video we created this timber frame wall with a weatherboard cladding and our vertical batten. Now we're going to have a look at how we would transform and how we would change a detail like this. So that will remain as it is. And for now we'll just do this. The other reality is that we need the footing to be wider, but we don't need it to be ridiculously wide. So let's make the footing 400 wide in this instance. So well, it means I need to go all the way down here because I want to stretch all of this. And we're going to stretch these elements out so that they're wider. Now our brick, a standard brick, is going to be 110 wide and 76 millimeters high just for the brick. We'll change that representation to a hatch that looks like this. A double slash on a 45 degree angle will make the slashes black and will make the background um, either a, an orangey color or a red color depending on what we're trying to do. And so that's representing the brick and we'll make the outline a little bit thicker because uh, brick is sort of a, a stronger material than the timber in this case. So where does that sit? Let's turn the true line weight off for a second. The brick will sit on the edge of the slab, sort of, because we need to have the timber frame with a 40 or 50 mil gap from the edge of the brick. So if I move that here and start again, move, drag, we want 110 plus 50, so let's make that 160. And I'm gonna get rid of all these other little bits, this damp proof course for a second, and I'll add it back in later, just because there's too much stuff that's making it a little bit hard to understand. And we'll just bring that sucking down here for now. So we could just stick the brick here. Now we don't just stick the brick onto the concrete. We don't glue it, we don't nail it. We have to mortar it in, and that means we need a 10 mil gap. Our 10 mil. And we'll add in our sand. We'll start with this one. And then we'll change its representation a little bit. Now we're currently saying that that's flush. So our sand is flush with the brick. Now that could be the case, but often we'll have a raked or a struck joint. And so here we'll do that just to show that the mortar joint is slightly raked. Now we could do this but the problem is that brick and mortar are not completely waterproof. So if we were to have all of our bricks rising from this point, so let's go move, multiply, and we're going to multiply in an increment or a spread between 86 because the brick plus the mortar joint is 10 millimeters. Let's just continue a few of these up and we'll group them all together. What would happen is that we'd get water when it rains hitting the brick, hitting the mortar joint, running through the brick running down the inside face, and then because this brick is currently on the same level as the timber frame, it would be going inside our house, and we don't want that. So what we'll often see happen is that when we have a brick wall, it's going to be set down at least one brick. Now this could be more, but one brick in this case will suffice. And what this means is that we can pretty much have no separation between the 
earth and our brick. So we don't see that concrete slab edge. Some people might think that's not desirable, particularly if we're after face brick, we wouldn't want to see that bit of concrete. And if we wanted to hide it completely, we could, instead of making it one brick, we could go down another brick. So we've got a step in our slab of two bricks. Now let's represent this properly. So we'll make the slab go down and then we'll make the slab go back. But we're not just going to stop where the brick stops, we're going to go all the way back to where the timber starts. So our timber frame is sitting on the edge of the concrete and then there is a, a gap, there's a void behind the bricks which we can see currently is underground and that's deliberate and we'll explain why we're doing that and how we're going to fix it in a minute. So let's take the earth and we're going to cut the earth out here. And we can see that the footing isn't working very well anymore. What does this need to be doing? We still need to have reinforcing, but what we'll commonly see happen is that we'll need to have this, let's ungroup this for a second. This will need to sit inside this area. Now it's possible also that this footing is going to be deeper, going to be wider, but for now we will just leave it like this. And we're going to leave it up to the engineer to determine how big this needs to be. And we might have the bottom reinforced as well. Now this is dropped down too low, so let's take another two just to bring that up. So it's up to the same level. And now we've got a brick veneer wall, but it's still not going to work completely well. Why is that? Because we need to be able to get moisture back out of the building. So just like we had a damp proof course before, we're going to need a damp proof course with our brick. But we're going to do it a little bit differently this time. This time we're going to embed the damp proof course in between our brick, in that mortar joint. We're going to slope it up to the underside of the timber. And let's turn back true line weight so it starts to make a bit more sense. And now we've got the ability when the moisture, water, seeps through the brick, runs down the face of the brick, it gets ejected outside. Now, in order for that to happen, this brick has to change a little bit and we change its representation. Between these bricks, we can have a weep hole. Now we could make it a, a weeping brick or we could just get rid of the perp end, the mortar joint between some of these bricks, every few bricks. And the way that we represent that means we'll just change this to solid uh, empty fill. And just like here, just like with the timber, we're going to draw a cross through it. So that doesn't mean that we're turning it into timber. Unfortunately, it just means because we've got a limited ability to draw different things when we're drafting, a cross through timber means it's not dressed, a cross through brick means it's a weep hole. We can have a cross through a hole and that means it's a void or a lift shaft. And we could have a cross in a bathroom and that means it's a shower. So we can have all these different crosses through things and they mean different things. But in this case, what's happening is that we've got our damp proof course, we've got our weep hole, and we now need to deal with termite barriers. Because now the problem is that we have a situation where termites could go through the ground, through the brick, 
and up into our building and they would be hidden. We'd never be able to see them. And so we need to do one of two things. We need to have either a termite barrier, a termite protection layer, we often call this termi mesh. Uh, that's a brand, but it's pretty common. Or we need to have some type of granite guard, again, which is a, a brand, but effectively it's a small amount of granite or gravel. So we're going to use our gravel tool to represent this, and we're going to fill some of this. Now that's not perfectly represented, but it's fine for now. So we're going to put, extend that to the back. We're going to put granite in here and that's going to stop termites from climbing up and in. Now let's just lower this down a bit. We want this to be down to this level, preferably. And now theoretically that means that the termites can't climb through the gravel because it's too dense. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've been told and that's supposedly how it works. Um, so that's one system of making that protected from termites. We've also got water resistance. We've got uh, reflective foil potentially or sarking, some type of thing so that any moisture stays away from our um, insulation and away from our timber frame and plasterboard and any moisture gets ejected back out of the building. And so effectively, that is our brick veneer detail. Uh, these triangles are a little bit big. These are supposed to represent um, concrete aggregate, uh, rocks in the concrete. So let's just make that feel a little bit smaller. Let's reduce this down to three. That's looking a little bit better now. So this is our brick veneer detail. Thank you for liking this tutorial. Please subscribe and click the bell to hear about new tutorials.